It's time for the GizWiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1963, recorded Tuesday, November 21st, 2023. Disco Tech. episode of the Giz is we answer the question, how cheap can a smartwatch get? Diggity has a new disco gadget. I have another gadget that looks like it just shouldn't work. And a video from OMG Mom. All next on the Giz It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizmos because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. Now, now, and here he is, your basted, uh, stuffed gadget tier, Dick <laughs> Bartolo. Uh, I spent all afternoon making stuffing, and now I can't remember what I did with the turkey. Oh gosh, so, you got to find that yeah. thing. I'm it's sure. I'm be... sure it'll pop on the top of your head at some point. Uh, you know, just somewhere where you it's it. got to be. It's got to be in the apartment. I didn't go out. <laughs> it's gotta, it's, it's gotta somewhere be. around here. <laughs> Happy but Thanksgiving! Of, yes, yeah, soon. Soon. We are recording early because it'll be Thanksgiving when we typically record the show. Um, so we can say, hey, happy Thanksgiving yeah, to everyone. happy Thanksgiving. Your Hope turkey you has arrived early. <laughs> um, that's great. That's great. Any plans for? Uh, uh, no, we're just going to have one, possibly one, possibly two people over. Nothing uh, big. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Same. I'm not, I, uh, this, uh, I just moved down to Florida Things got a bit hectic this uh, leading up to this week. So honestly, this I love my family. I'm going to miss them so much, but I'm not going to be making it down to Austin uh, this year. So uh, yeah, just just chilling here and having a good calm. It's almost like a little vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And I no, hope everyone's this... Thanksgiving is great. I'll be calling oh, I... the parents, obviously, and uh, oh, yeah. chatting with them. Yeah. yeah, no, that's going to be good. That's yeah. going to be good. And I and I had what I thought was uh, news, and and, and kind of bad news. But now this morning the bad news got canceled. So I got. <laughs> that's what we like. Bad news yes, canceled. Yes, canceled. The the bad news was, Toy Fair, which has been in New York I for more than a hundred years, announced. That the next toy fair, that toy fair was moving to New Orleans. Oh, oh, yeah. And then it said, "Are you going to go?" And I said, "I love toys, but I don't want to step all the way to New Orleans." That's crazy. Um, and this morning, someone sent me uh, an article and said, "Well, guess what? Toy Fair said that the reaction to moving the show from New York." to New Orleans was not well received <laughs> and they have canceled those plans. <laughs> <laughs> the fans have spoken. The that fans have spoken. The fans have spoken. I got to say this last toy fair, I really felt like something uh, picked up big time. There was a tipping point because I saw more coverage from toy fair than I have ever, ever, ever seen. On TikTok, all over normal social yeah. media that I follow. Yes. You know what? Part of it, and, and I'm not, I think they're going to go back to February. Last year, because of COVID and stuff and, and shipments, they pushed Toy Fair from Feb. It's normally in February. Mm -hmm. They pushed it into October. And I think that made way more sense for a lot of the networks. Yeah. Because... You know, October just—it's Christmas time, oh, it's of course. Christmas time. Exactly, and that's why I think there was so much coverage. Yeah, it just um, makes sense. I, I yeah. think Toy Fair may have been set up in a time when the Christmas toys got decided <laughs> in February. Yeah, <laughs> when yes. you know you'd contact the factory, you'd get all this stuff. But nowadays, things are just just a bit different, and I think yeah. it being more timed to. Um, to kind of what life is, 
I think makes yeah. a lot more sense. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. We also. Uh, have Oh, go ahead. go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to change gonna the say, subject. So finish. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, it, it's kind of interesting that, and, and this holds for the hardware show too, and I'm sure for Toy Fair, is that when you go to Toy Fair, you, there's a lot of toys you didn't see because the manufacturers originally go, like with toys, they'll go to, it used to be Toys R Us, but probably Walmart, and uh, and if they're not interested in the toy, they don't even bother don't. bringing it to yeah. <laughs> and at the hardware show, they they go to Home Depot, they went to Lowe's, and they showed them the stuff long before the hardware show. And if they expressed no interest in it, they just killed it. No point. They made <laughs> made a ton of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you um, feel like the market's a bit different now that? You don't have to have a brick and mortar buy a whole bunch of product. Like you can just do stuff on Amazon or your own website. Like it's possible to. It's not quite the vertical yeah, most it, of these it, companies are in. No, ex exactly. I, I think the thing is you'd need to be someone like Mattel to really decide. You could almost decide this is going to be a hit. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. And unless it's really. Or just dreadful. completely independent. Like. Getting into Toys R Us is a dream anyway. So yes, yeah, so yeah. you know, let's just put it on Amazon. Yeah. Absolutely. Now the wonderful thing is, is anybody can give it a try. I mean, I had more, not more, but I had a couple of people say, "Oh, I have a great game, and I'm going to make a million dollars." And I said, "Lots of luck." I mean, I worked for Good Entertainment for twenty years. I tried to develop a TV. Well, first of all, if you develop a TV show and you work for Goods and Todman, they own it. Yeah. Um, but the, the problem back then was like, like going to Home Depot for the hardware show. If CBS wanted a show, they either went to Merv Griffin Productions, Barry Enright, uh, I mean, uh, Goods and Todman, or Chuck Barris. Because those were the three companies who owned 98%. <laughs> Of game shows, yeah. and so people. It's crazy it. how, <laughs> like, there was definitely it's 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 almost like gosh, how awesome was it when we had the whole thing unlocked? We knew exactly what it was like. <laughs> you just go to those three people. It was so simple back in those yes, days. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I, I've I've definitely felt like that. Like, man, it was so easy to be mainstream back in the day. It is. Go be partnered with the mainstream companies. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. knew it. And nowadays it I, seems. Yeah. But now the fun thing is, you, I mean, we're doing this. The fun thing is anybody can be in showbiz. Yeah. Maybe yeah. on a small scale. but Yeah. It's a great thing and also can be a frustrating thing as can, well. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, speaking of uh, independent, uh, independent um, shows. Independent yes. show biz. Yes, yes, yes. Independent giz fizz. Seems to rhyme. Oh, wow, wow. Yes. <laughs> I want you to talk a little bit about giz fizz uh, and uh, tell people yeah, what's okay, going so, on Yeah, okay, so uh, Twit uh, announced that they were, stop, they were going to stop live streaming. Uh, and the giz fizz was only live streamed. Uh, so it ended... And I was sort of uh, uh, unhappy because it ended with episode 549. Uh, and I Horrible. thought some that, Honestly, that's uh, the worst part of it, is you're not at a round number. Yes. 49. Yes. You just can't end yeah. like that. I, I thought, you know, I, I have to do something. So I, I, I said to people on the final show, if you're interested in Fizz continuing, just drop me an email and I'll see what I can do. Uh, and I got a lot of emails, and, and some of them were quite moving, that Giz Fizz is my favorite hour of the week, and, and the Giz Fizz family, and I thought, um, I have to do something. So I called Chad. <laughs> what's the, what's, I have, I have a cam, a camera, and a computer. How can I get on the internet? And he said, oh, BS. And I said, I said, I know how to BS. I don't know. <laughs> The O part. He said, oh, it's simple. Well, to my brain, it's not. But Chad has one of those programs where he could run my computer. And I mean, I'm missing a ton of money from my bank accounts. But 
it was worth it. Hey, I, but I have been answering your emails. You got to give me that. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. The bank called and said, when was, when was Chad a uh, co-depositor, a, a, a <laughs> right. co-withdrawer? Co-signer on this? Are you sure about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks to Chad. I am attempting GizFist starting tomorrow night. It'll be an experiment. And uh, yeah. Yeah, if it works, we'll just make it a regular yeah. thing. Yeah, it's going to be a learning <laughs> experience, but uh, yeah. we're going to yeah. give it a go. And yeah. the place to watch it is uh, just just here. Um, yeah. It'll be live streamed on YouTube. So on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the gizwiz, I believe is. I think you're just gizwiz, and I think our show I, is the gizwiz. The, oh, okay, okay. Well, I think that's the me. difference. Okay. Um, that, and... Yeah. Uh, and then also, uh, I'm going to put it on the website, gizwiz.tv. In the future, we may be, I might be switching around where the live streams live so that both GizFizz and GizWiz can easily be live streamed. Um, oh. But for the moment, people oh, just head oh, on down. Oh, uh, my turkey's... <laughs> oh, no, the timer went oh, off. Oh, it's time. <laughs> yeah. You got a base. Oh, I was going to say it was getting very dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't want that to dry out. No, that's good. That's very good. I have to have this on my head for four and a half hours, according to the... It weighs eight Man, that pounds. thing must be hot, like an oven. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It is. Um, no, that, 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 this, this, is, this is great. Yeah, um, so... And, and, and I'm using the Mad Magazine uh, theory here, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this again more on the first uh, Giz Fizz. We used to do a thing called the Mad Minutes, which was me and often uh, Sour Fowler, who uh, uh, worked at Mad Magazine. And we did the Mad Minutes. They were one-minute silly commercials. And Dennis had one of those $30 Casio organs with the background music. Uh, we did it for years, and we just sent them out to, to stations. Stations could subscribe, and it was free. And the only thing was, um, this is a Mad Minute. And I said to Bill we can produce them cheap and people would just hear a mad minute and think of mad magazine. So oh, that sounds good. Um, somewhere along the line, a PR agency asked for a meeting with Bill and I that they wanted to produce mad minutes, which would be 45 seconds and they would sell 15 seconds of the mad minute. Oh. And <laughs> Bill said, um, uh, um, oh, uh, I'm interested if Dick is. Um, and so they, they made a tape and they had Gary Owens, you know, that from laughing was the announcer on laughing. And instead of the little Casio organ, they had a, an orchestra and they sent us a little tape with five uh, mad minutes on it and i played it for bill i was impressed i played it for bill and bill said uh it's not that i don't like this i loathe this <laughs> mad is a cheap magazine and this is way too professional when you think of mad magazine we think of your voice, a $30 Casio organ. I, I, Maybe I, some I scotch want... tape and bubble gum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. And, and during the newspaper so strike, uh, during the newspaper shortage, the printer said to Bill, we have good news. There's no newsprint available. We're going to print mad on slick paper for free. Wow. And Bill, Bill said, you're not. No, no please don't. He said, no, he said, they said, yeah, but it'll cost eight times the cost to buy newsprint. We can give you glossy wow. paper. I don't want glossy paper. <laughs> 35 cents cheap. That's crazy. That's awesome. So Honestly. that is the theory uh, of why Gizfizz will go forward. Because cheap. It could be a, we can just a, do it. A, well, yeah, that's it. We're doing the best we can. That's great. That's that's awesome. That's really awesome. Um it, yeah, that's perfect. So yeah, so just tune in to GizFizz uh, for the live uh, people watching. It'll be tomorrow. Uh, for those who are watching the episode after the fact, it would have it would have been on Wednesday, and uh, hopefully, 
future Wednesdays. So we'll have yeah. Giz Fizz on Wednesday, Giz Wiz on Thursday, and it'll be a grand time. Yeah. I'm super excited. Five thirty California time, eight thirty New York time at Gizwiz TV. Um, uh, okay, should we jump into gadget number one? Let's do it. Here is gadget number one. I don't buy new watches often, especially tech watches, because it takes so long to learn how to use them properly. I'm still using a Galaxy Gear 2, must be like six years old, but, uh, and I only like square watches or rectangular watches. And I, I've had my eye on this for a long time. Uh, the Black Friday deal of the day, it says $79.99, but could I do better? Let's see. I saw this over at, is it Temu? T-E-M-U? Um, yeah. Now they only have it in black, but a few days ago they had it with the orange, uh, highlights and it was $22. Okay. But reviews of the website are awful. Yeah, Tim. That they awful. have pictures of watches and what they send you is a totally different, cheap version. Um, anyway, so I did not risk 22 bucks. We're at eBay, 3179 I would have it in three days. Uh, I opted for that. And it's here. With a wristwatch, it comes in deluxe packaging. Okay. Oh. I already tore the bag. <laughs> what is this, Hermes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What will it look like in person? All right. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> it's big. It's big. All right. This is a fake uh, thing on the front. Um, oh, oh, you just destroyed the watch, Dicky D. That was the whole yeah, point. Sorry, right. you you have not wireless charging. <laughs> All right, one of those little two prong guys that click on up here. All right, and there's the sensor for your body functions. Um, actually, the display's not bad. Uh, so what I'll do now is I have to go in and find out a watch face that I like and put a little charge in it, and then we'll do another little video. But so far, I like it. All right, I've had some experience with my new smart watch. All right. And uh, it's it's big, all right. This is the one that I use now and will keep using. I like it because I have my logo behind me. But with this watch, you can, uh, in the app, there must be a hundred watch faces to choose from. The app is weird. It's called the, the fit, D-A-F-I-T. That's the app. And I believe it's the same app that a lot of, uh, I guess non-branded smartphones use because I was looking at the $80 version of this and in all the photos, the icons look exactly the same that is on this watch. Um, this watch has a couple of features that I like that my current watch doesn't. I like that it has a microphone and a speaker. I like that I actually answered a call through the watch. That was fun. Uh, if you're playing music, it can play music through the watch. But the bass seems to be lacking. I'm <laughs> I don't think they have both speakers you know, in here. <laughs> uh, there is a, a major drawback to this watch. Can you use the watch while you're charging it? Uh-huh. You can not. Okay, so there's the watch and the watch face. Now I click on the little charging cable, and that's what you get. Oh, all right, so How's I, 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 I don't like that at all. And even the $80 watch in one of the photos, it's just showing the time and the word charging. So I don't mind the size of the watch. And it comes with a handy manual mm, that's in about 50 languages. One of them is English. 
Uh, it does not come with a magnifying glass, but you'll probably need it. <laughs> okay. It was a fun experiment, though, okay? Can you buy a smartwatch for... Oh, and on uh, TEMU, uh, because I looked at it there and didn't buy it, they keep sending me more and more offers, and I got one offer for $17, okay? So if you want a smartwatch for the kids... Uh, I try AliExpress. At AliExpress, it's only like twenty-two bucks. That's it. That is that is pretty cool. You know, I I I missed. It went by very fast. Someone bought a watch on Timu, whatever it is, for twelve dollars. A smart watch. Oh. <laughs> so. But you know what? Is that is that unusual that a watch while it's charging will not function so like my apple watch which is definitely in a different <laughs> yeah. universe <laughs> compared yes. to these watches uh no you can still use it like you can still yeah, access the with... menus and yes that's yeah even stuff. if it's sitting in the charger my samsung i can go in and see how far i ran and all yeah. that this you can do nothing that's weird it just goes into standby charging mode only yeah huh Strange. Yeah, that is very strange. Um, so uh, I haven't had any direct uh, use of t Temu. I, everyone, in the chat room, everyone has a different way to say it. Timu. I see, like, Temu. I, see, I think it's Timu. Like, the letter T. -mu. T Mu, I think. Mu, okay. That's what the chat okay. seems to be saying. Um, I haven't ordered anything from there yet. I haven't seen them pop up a lot. They seem so, they seem like a more streamlined AliExpress, but still just as Wild West as AliExpress. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, when I put the watch in, in the basket, it said, uh, don't worry, we don't sell your credit card information. And I'm like, well, is that a feature? Thanks. <laughs> it's oh, like going to. Wow. Well, uh, oh, you must be the first one. We, d I'm thinking, did we used to, <laughs> exactly. we used to sell people's credit cards? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, and, welcome to McDonald's, where we are lead free. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, there was lead before. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, just I just thought this is. I'm not gonna. Fortunately, I hadn't. I had just put the watch in the basket, and when I saw that, um, yeah. so that's the one I ended up buying. I think, um, as I said, they all have different names, but most of them will tell you. Oh, there it is for thirteen dollars. Thirteen bucks. Oh, they but... wanted to rip me off, telling me it was going to be seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> I... But, of course, Scooter X found. Oh not, my quite God. This, it, not quite the same fun. design. It's definitely a different design. Uh -oh. It's more of an Apple Watch design. <laughs> but look at this price. 99 cents. <laughs> oh, but 90? the thing is, it doesn't tell time. That's the only problem. <laughs> you might just be getting the strap. Honestly, sometimes when these things look too good to be true, it's because they are. Because they are a scam. I, this I has happened... Would to me a few times is I thought I was getting a great price on something and then they, they send an email. Oh, by the way, this isn't, uh, like I did it with a uh, Halloween costume. I saw this awesome Halloween costume, ordered it, and then they said, oh, by the way, you just got a piece of that. You're getting the mask and that's it. <laughs> it was like, what? Oh, now the yeah. photos were everything yeah. else and there's not anything you can do about it. Anyway, it's just. You know, that could be a watch like the watch I had where it comes with a paste on face. It could be. Except this could be the sticker watch. Yes. <laughs> so at your own risk, there's that option. Thanks, Scooter X, for finding yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here's scary. the AliExpress option and then what you got. Um, and so the things that you are using this for are the step tracking. Obviously yeah, you know, what, time. The, basically what it was is the other, a couple of weeks ago, I misplaced my uh, Samsung watch and I suddenly thought, the only backup watch I have is an analog Casio watch. I, I need a backup watch that will count steps. And I thought, let me just buy something inexpensive because it's mainly going to be in a drawer. 
until the time when uh, I can't find my regular watch anymore. And yeah. And I started looking around and I said, oh, this is handsome. But then I, I did like, uh, I called Dennis once and, and I said, you're not going to believe. I said, how's the voice quality? He said, it's like normal voice quality. Why? Where are you calling from? I said, well, I'm out in the street and I'm calling you through the phone, uh, through the watch. That's great. And he said, how could you do that? That's great. So, so you'll so see was... the notification that a call is coming yeah, in. Yes, yes. Do you get and, notifications and about like text messages and things like that? Too? Text messages come up on this. That's a, yeah. a really good alternative if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars yeah. on another and smartwatch. I just put in six phone numbers I use all the time, and I bring up the dialer, and I just hit Dennis's name, and it calls him. I can leave. It's good because in the winter, you know, your phone could be under four layers of clothing. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Blue, the Bluetooth uh, goes through the clothing easily, so you just talk into your watch. That's great. That's great. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So that was fun. That's cool. Okay. Well, I took over a gadget this week, um, and it's a big one. So let's take a look. Today, we are taking a look at the Legion Go by Lenovo. This is a handheld gaming computer. It runs Windows 11 and all of your games along with it. The Legion Go is dominated by this 8 0.8 inch screen. It's really high resolution and it'll do 144 hertz. Uh, there's two gaming controllers on either side and these are removable and they still work wirelessly with the Legion Go when they're disconnected. So if you want to uh, use the kickstand on the back and then set it up, you can do just that. Along uh, the front of the gamepad, you got your joysticks. You also have a D-pad, you have a select start sort of option. You also have this button, which is like the overlay to their gaming dashboard. I don't really love this gaming dashboard that much, um, but that's all software and uh, who knows how, <laughs> I just basically just don't use it and move on into Steam uh, instead. Over here on the other side, there is a button that'll bring up some stats. It'll, you can change your resolution. So we can go to the native uh, 2560 by 1600 and in 1440 Hertz if we'd like. Yeah, I know the screen is kind of going crazy uh, as it's uh, switching that, but that's no big deal. You also have your A, B, X and Y button, you have another joystick, and then you also have an actual touchpad, just like you would find on a laptop, in case you actually just need a mouse. The touch screen and the tablet mode of this has actually worked pretty great for me so far. Now, there's also a few other things. You got a USB-C on the bottom over here, but you also have a USB on the top up here, next to your volume buttons, an SD card slot, your uh, air exhaust, a headphone jack, and your power button. Now let's look a little bit closer at the controllers because you also have a bumper, a trigger, you also have some side buttons here. This is the release to release it off of the tablet. On the other side, you have even more buttons and a scroll wheel hidden in there with a trigger and a bumper as well. This side also has some extra buttons, which make more sense when you take this and switch it into its FPS mode, which I'll show you in just a bit. The Legion Go isn't super thin, okay? We're not talking iPad thin, we're talking like closed laptop thin, but in terms of it being a handheld gaming computer, it honestly feels really, really comfortable. I like how, you know, the ergonomics of the controllers sit well in the hand. There's a lot of controller there, but it all feels really, really good. So talking about playing some actual games, I will say that the Legion Go is really great at it. Uh, the large screen makes gaming seem really, really awesome. I mean, it's a huge screen in your hands. Now, because this is just Windows 11, I can run really all of my games, all of this from Steam. Although I have had not so great success with the controllers uh, working. Uh, now that could be a Steam issue, a game issue that really isn't the Legion Go's uh, pure fault, but uh, I haven't had the best success with it. The Legion Go can convert from this like game mode into a tablet mode by taking the controllers off. 
a little bit hard, there we go. And then you can use the kickstand on the back just to set it down, which is really cool. And it's fun to sort of game with controllers in your hand on one side and then your game here uh, in full screen uh, looks awesome. So being able to game with my controllers just in my hand and the 8.8 inch touchscreen that is honestly really large. Like this is like a small television size, okay? We're, we're talking tablet size. And uh, on an airplane, in a hotel, this is, this is plenty large to really feel, I mean, I'm sitting very far away from it and uh, it still feels like a great size for a screen. The Legion Go comes with obviously the uh, computer, but also a really cool case, which is really nice and fits it perfectly. And then it also comes with a charging cable. This cable though, doesn't fit anywhere in the case. So you gotta carry that separately. Uh, inside the case, you'll also find this little guy. This is your adapter for FPS mode. So let's talk a little bit about FPS mode. You take this out of your case, you take one of the controllers, the one with uh, this little sensor on the bottom, you take that off of the Legion Go and you snap it into the base that you pulled out uh, from before. Also make sure you turn on FPS mode. And now this is a mouse, which you can use just like any other mouse. These extra buttons that I pointed out earlier, they become your right and left click. And so you can actually use this similar to how you would a mouse and you can see. So now in this mode, you get a normal mouse to work with, which is very, very unique. So if I needed to do any typical gaming things or computer things, I can also do that here. I will say that all of these buttons are active. So like sometimes I'll squeeze this and it'll click when I don't mean to, oh my gosh. And this is not as ergonomic as a typical mouse. I'm struggling here to get it to work. I wish that like I could have used this more like a traditional, this joystick situation is not natural off the bat. So the Legion Go comes in at $699 starting price. Uh, do I think that it's worth it? Um, it's a weird kind of category because $699 for a gaming PC, very cheap, but $699 for a handheld gaming uh, device, that's very expensive. Uh, now you're getting a really high quality screen and a very large screen, and that's mostly what you're paying for with this. Uh, some places that it falls short compared to the competition is uh, a fully integrated experience. Honestly, um, the fact that I was downloading Steam or the Microsoft Store and I didn't know if my games were gonna really work perfectly, uh, that's kind of a big con to me that I could spend all this money and maybe the controller is just super hard to map to my game uh, where if I bought a competitor, it would all just kind of work like a Nintendo Switch, like it's just gonna work. In the end, I feel like the perfect type of person who would want this gadget is someone who does not mind the extra weight, uh, trading that for the larger, more incredible screen and someone who wants this to be a full Windows 11, you know, computer replacement in a way where you're not just looking for only a gaming device. If you just want it for gaming, then I might suggest something else, something that's a little sleeker, a little smaller, uh, a little bit more compact and less heavy. Uh, all in all though, I like the Legion Go. Uh, I think that it's a very nice gaming uh, computer. There we go. <clears throat> so Excellent. I've still been playing with it after the fact, and I will say the controller mapping is by far the biggest headache. Uh, you know, they uh, I saw in the chat some people asking, will it run Cyberpunk 2077? It will, not at high settings, but uh, I have this <laughs> issue. One of the first menus of Cyberpunk 2077 requires you to hit the space bar to get past the menu and there's no space bar on this. And so it's just super oh frustrating God. that you're like, I wish I could hit the A button just to get past this menu, but I can't. Um, 
And well, then on the tablet, how do you, if you're using it as Windows 10, oh, so that's you, when it's the space bar. Right. And you can, I can go into the like menu and bring up a, a, a keyboard and hit the space oh, oh, bar I see, I see, I see. Uh, and on screen. But that gets difficult when I'm in a full screen game, right? If I'm in a web application, that's easy for me to bring up the keyboard. But if I'm in a full screen game, game, it's not nearly as easy to bring that up because I don't even have the taskbar at the bottom. Um, I saw some questions about if uh, you could hook this up via uh, HDMI. Uh, it does not have a dedicated HDMI port, uh, but these USB-C ports can be used to, uh, to extend the display if you want to plug it into uh, TV. Um, online, the reviews have been pretty down on this product, uh, mostly talking about the weight and how uh, just it, it, it's not quite as compatible as you want it to be. <laughs> For most people who are wanting something like this, they're looking at something like a Switch or a Steam Deck and thinking that this is going to be very similar. But both Switch and Steam Deck have put a lot of time into their controller mapping and to make sure that games that you run on those will work with the controllers. And that, I feel like not a single thought has been put towards mapping these controllers into games. And part of that is that uh, it, the, the pro is that I can play any game from anywhere. I can play it from Steam. I can play it from Microsoft. I can play it from good old games. I can play it from the Epic Store. But the con is that it doesn't have native controller support, so I have to go in there and manually set the buttons to what they should be and, and exactly how I want the controllers to work with that game. Steam has a great uh, interface for that, um, but it is, it's a hurdle. And if someone just wants to pick up this up and start playing a game, that's not what's gonna happen. Uh, you're gonna have to need to get into menus and really make sure that it's compatible and things like that. Um, so, uh, anyway, that's all of my thoughts about the uh, the Legion Go. At some point, they could upgrade the uh, software, though, right? Yes, and that's, I mean, that's definitely what I want, especially this uh, gaming overlay that you, I kind of showed before. It's buggy. It's not It's not a great experience. Let me just show you a quick kind of example of that once uh, it wakes up. I will say, this takes a while to turn on. Either that or I just have not figured out the magical sequence of things I got to hit to get it to turn on. Um, I, I have found that to be a bit frustrating. <laughs> turn on, I swear. There we go. Here, it's turning on here. At least, I hope it is. We can do it. We can do it, Legion Go. We got this. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Maybe not. Maybe we don't got this. I'm starting to think we don't got this. Legion Go. Okay, hmm. well, we'll come back to that. <laughs> okay. Great. As you can see, it's been a little bit of a frustrating experience uh, using the Legion Go. Um, I'm still not, like, a, a writing it off as, like, there isn't a place for this. Um, but uh, it, it has not been a perfectly smooth experience using it, like some of the other handheld gaming options that I've, I've played with. So you go. Okay. The Legion okay. Go. Go. <laughs> can you play Tetris on it? That's the only game I know. You can. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I, that's good. Um, okay. Back to me with yeah. another gadget right here. I'm at Trend Alert Disco Tech. So there is the Disco Party Water Resistant. This is just five water below. resistant oh. shower speaker, or we have the waterproof floating uh, floating sprinkler light. We have the global color changing light, the music bowl speaker, the. Disco Technicolor light, or do we want the Disco <laughs> LED fountain? 
They uh, really leaned uh, into uh, disco. I think we have a winner. Yes. Disco mirror LED fountain. <laughs> so the waterfall fountain will give me a touch of disco <laughs> here at Disneyland. Wow. Or maybe it can add a touch more disco here at Disneyland. <laughs> you can't say we don't have fun here. All right. <laughs> okay. You think this is going to be over <laughs> overpowered by what I have already? All right. Room to room. Uh, I think it was 555. Is it on the box? I think it was Yeah, it is 555. 555. I saw it on All right, the, so in the video. It does say you, you'll need batteries. But I'm willing to bet you're going to need water, too. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's... I think it says it comes with authentic river rocks. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it does have rocks. That's great. One poor river is missing its rocks. Yeah. Uh, foam, it's broken. Who did That's they send out to get rocks to put them in those little boxes? How tiny is <laughs> How tiny is my waterfall? Oh, God. Mm. It's a waterfall for ants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is very funny. <laughs> There's room for five LED. No, I guess that's where the waterfall is. There's one, one LED light. Oh my gosh. Um, mm -mm. All right. Oh, I like that the battery compartment has a little hinge on it. That is nice. Because I've lost more battery compartments. All right. Okay. Lock it. You know, you just pour the water in. I'm assuming that you just, I hope I don't ruin this, but the water has to run <laughs> through these holes. That's where the batteries go. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I figure since the holes are there See, with a, the water, water to drain ladies and into. gentlemen, get ready for the prancing liquids. Oh my God! <gasps> Is anything happening? Uh, drip, drip, drip. <laughs> not much. But it looks like it's spraying a leak. Does look good. Not quite well, a waterfall. It's not well, it's not going to dance. Oh. But is it? Oh wait! Oh wait a minute! Wait. One. One miserable stream. Is this an A drip? <laughs> Not I see. To the I think I see five is it up there. Better? No. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. All right. There's water in it and rocks in it. Got the photo. Ah, uh, and put on. Ah. Is it terrible? Yeah, a little better. Well, you know. The water would be calming guess, without the sound yeah, of the motor kind of going. Of yeah. <laughs> it is probably the cheapest humidifier you can get for the winter. And, well, you know what? 555, as we always say, the kids will love it. That's it. Uh, room yeah, it'd be room. nice on a bar or something like that. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. On a, on, you know, on your bar. Yeah. That, that would be very cute. I could, I could see a uh, office, like a yeah, a de an office desk. If you just wanted a little um, water feature. Yeah, yeah. No, it it turned out to be certainly worth five fifty five. Yeah, yeah. And there, but there's no plug. There's no way to. No, no, yeah. you, you know, you could get one of those little battery things that... Five Below needs uh, to sell that. That's what they... Yes, they, they should. For five bucks, sell the, the double yes, A and triple A thing. Sell that kit yeah. so that you could plug this into the wall and just let it run until you need to add more water to it. It's the perfect upsell. You want to be yeah. able to plug this thing forever? Here's another five bucks. Yeah. No, I, honestly, I think it's. I they don't do a think. bad job of showing the uh, s scale with the hand. It's about two hands big. Yeah, 
And the fact is, it got to be a pump in there. All yeah. for five fifty-five is pretty amazing. Yeah, I like it. <clears throat> I like it. Will it make you need to use the bathroom after listening? No. Uh, well, Dennis said. Dennis said I have to. I have to stop filming. So it <laughs> will. Yes. <laughs> got to run. That's funny. <laughs> That's great. Disco yeah. man, I can't believe how many disco things there were in there. <laughs> I know. That's crazy. It's uh, and, Disco and, Fever over Five Below. Yeah. And Disco Tech is a clever a clever way for the display. True. Honestly. Disco yeah. Tech. I don't know how many teenagers, though, nowadays will know that a Disco Tech uh, wa- it was, was a thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that may go right over people's heads. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but not our audience. Nope. Not us. Not us. Okie dokie. It's pretty cool. Well, with that, let's move on to... Chad. No, you don't need it, but you might want it at Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. Okie dokie. This one, we're going to do live. And oh, sure. um, Tell the theme again. It is gadgets that look like they shouldn't work. Is, is what the theme is. Here's the gadget. It's actually even still in its packaging from Amazon, just a few bags. Um, any, any idea what this you, thing? You know, I, I, I suspect I know. You think you do? What, it, it, does it pump I th- and work? Yes. And this, this is part of the process. So yeah, you may know what this is then. Um, so the idea behind this is that it is a whisk, basically. Uh, and so I got some eggs here, and we can oh. make some, some scrambled eggs. Lies? But as you can see, <laughs> this thing is like not what you would expect a whisk to look like. That is strong. It doesn't like ouch, that hurts. You know, typically a whisk has yeah, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, has nice uh, soft ridges. You know, I don't know. You can whisk it stuff up. This looks more like a weapon, in my opinion, than any type of thing I would be using to mix up eggs. You can imagine, yeah. not so great. So that was that was my inspiration of this thing. Just looks like it shouldn't work. Here's its okay. method of working. And this is the first time I'm doing it, is you should be able to put this at the bottom of a bowl and then push down on the handle and the spinning part will spin. So as I push down on this side, let's see if I can get it. Well, my, there we go. So you can see Oh, I see, yeah. that this will sp- oh, oh, spin okay. around. So the if it thought, works. Yeah, it's is that at the bottom of this, saving. instead of mixing, yeah. I just, like that. Uh, oh, you, know, okay. you can kind of get a dever. Is that is what we're going to try to pull off. So, honestly, I think this might be the better angle to show it off. Welcome to Chad's Kitchen, the cooking show <laughs> on the Gizwiz. Where did my, I used to have a trash can right here, and now I don't. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to figure out a solution for the... Put them in your water container. <laughs> eggshells. I'm going to set up a little... Move the Legion Go over there. Okay, eggshells are going to go right there. Try not get salmonella on anything. So we're going to crack this egg. Let's try two eggs. I think that'll be a good example. Okay. So there we go. We got our two eggs in there. Oh, no, I broke one of the yolks already. Not a fair fight. Uh, what is going to be the best way to show this off? Maybe, maybe this is it. Anyway, y'all get the idea of how the action works, so y'all don't need to yeah, that's good. see it exactly. So let's try it. All right. It's kind of working. Let's go crazy. It's kind of working. Oh, that, yeah, it is. Yeah. Trying to scramble some eggs. At the bottom of this bowl, in the middle, it works a lot better than on the sides. And I think that's because it's scraping up. Uh, There's a, 
almost like a knob on the end of this. You can kind of see that knob. Oh, yeah. And that is really where it wants to kind of pivot around. So once I start getting to the con sort of the concaves of this bowl, it really rubs up against the bowl. But if I can keep it on the flat portion of it, then it makes this mixing a lot better. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I also feel like this is about the minimum amount that I can have in here uh, because there is a bit of a gap between the bottom and where the uh, mixing wires are. So I almost two eggs in this bowl is like minimum. If I had more eggs, it would actually be easier yeah. uh, to do it. So yeah, here's the question. Is that easier than just using a fork <laughs> to, to mix? Uh, yeah. I'm going to say no. <laughs> Not unless you have a family and you do this a lot. Or maybe <clears throat> you have a reason that this motion is so much easier than... Oh, maybe. A, oh, like maybe, maybe you have yeah. a wrist injury or something like that. Oh, yeah, that's good. You know, maybe this would be um, the option for you. I think that I'm a little bit hesitant to really um, recommend it because also my, my thought is the next step is we're going to throw this into a washing machine and there's like a spring and mechanisms in that handle that are gonna get wet, I assume, kind of makes me feel like it might deteriorate just a bit. No, there's a gasket. Does yeah. it say wa uh, dishwasher safe? Let's uh, double check that here. Wow, uh, it's only $7. That's I know, that is that is true. The price is very and, interesting. And stainless is good. I, I had to move all the ingredients before I could get to my keyboard. Um, let's search for dishwasher. Uh, is dishwasher safe? Yes, it is. It is. Oh. So that's great. Um, so we're going to see if they suggested any other things to mix. Oh, it doesn't look like they do. Other than eggs. Like, is there another thing that might make... Uh, I have eggs and more eggs. Yeah. Meat filling. Cream. Oh, if you wanted to make oh, whipped cream, maybe, I maybe wonder whipped if... whipped cream, that, that would be good, actually. If you could make whipped cream. Maybe I could... This is, honestly, this is the mechanism to churn butter. It looks like I'm churning butter over here. Um, well, if you can get butter out of the eggs, I would be <laughs> impressed. I think I would... I would be an alchemist, not a uh, chef. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That is... Uh, okay. I thought that... Maybe I was stretching on this one, but it looks like it shouldn't be something yeah, that could I, be I, I would say it works. But yeah, I think well, it's, it it's works. A, it's a good stocking stuffer for a chef. Yes, yes. For seven yeah. bucks, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the stainless steel whisk, push-activated whisk. Um, there you go, inexpensive. Is this my last week, or is next week my last week? Next, week's the last next week. week will be the last of gadgets yeah. that look like they shouldn't work. So uh, that that's a ton of fun. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, our video is from OMG Mom, <gasps> and she said, we thought of you a lot when we went to the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lots of old train engines to look at, but best of all, our tour included a ride out to the engine turntable one of the best gadgets we have ever seen. Wow. And she said we could run the video as I read her it's email. It's a little turntable, I'm assuming. Little little engine uh, turntable. It's like a, a big turntable. A little bit bigger? Okay, let's see this. Um, here the, Whoa! So it yeah, she, the turns turntable the engine. Is 80 tons. And the engine that they are driving up onto it is 120 tons. 
and she said originally I, I guess this is what the the uh, uh, speech the woman there is giving the originally four men would manually turn an engine around by pushing on the turntable no now way. it's engine driven ah. and the turntable was needed because steam engines could not go backwards well that that's actually not true uh, steam engines could go backwards but it was way easier oh. oh here you're cutting out just a bit re-say what you just said uh, i was saying um uh, steam engines could back up, but it was way easier to turn a steam engine on a turntable than to try and use track. It would take forever to, to turn the engine around. Um, she said that there are a few workshops that can repair steam engines. This museum has a couple. They also have the ability to build replacement parts as parts are no longer available. Uh, he, she said in the attached picture you'll see the pit underneath the engine that allows the repairmen to work on the engine. So let's see, did she... That's crazy. Here, yeah, I can try to get that uh, photo. She, oh, you may not know this. She adds, Chad's grandfather and grandmother met while working for the railroad, Chad's grandfather was a depot ag agent at several locations in Texas, and Chad's grandmother was a telegraph operator. Oh! Chad's other grandfather worked in the train yard before he graduated college. I did know that the train, trains and... and stuff have been in my <laughs> history but honestly i didn't know how or or uh where that's crazy yeah and now do you have the photo that was in I that email i do i do so here's the photo of uh of that so what is what are we looking at here oh you know what i don't think you can see this photo i think oh down that... there Yes, exactly. I think, yes, yes, that's all you can walk under an engine. Oh. Uh, this is like I, when you go to get your oil changed uh, in yeah, a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, exactly. Instead of jacking the engine up, it's easier to drive it onto a track that is hollow underneath and has a set of stairs at each end so that the workman can go down and be under the engine. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, wow, there's a beautiful steam engine in the background, too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, um, amazing. And the museum is uh, trail.com, tvrail.com. Oh, Tennessee Valley. Okay, I thought it would have been television rail. T <laughs> oh, wow. That is very cool. Chattanooga. Yeah. You may need to book a trip to Chattanooga. Yeah. Check this place out. So good. are they on? Are they they're, they're on a long term RV trip, right? They just finished uh, a few weeks a weekish ago. Um, yeah, they were on a a huge. I mean, basically all you know through the <laughs> all half of the U.S. Um, oh, they had, wow. I forget wow. the exact amount of states, but yeah, they uh, they did a very long RV trip where. Um, over many weeks and every like three days they would change to a new uh place a new uh rv spot and oh that's yeah. great my that's mother's great. hobby is to plan vacations and so she loves to read about places find destinations to go to um learn what are the best camping spots inside of a park that sort of thing and so, oh, that's uh, great. Yeah. And first. hopefully your father likes that. <laughs> <laughs> and my father likes to tag along. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, she said, signed your fans, Selena 
and Dane Johnson. Yeah, and and so. my dad does a uh, a lot of the hard work of getting from driving a lot, setting up the RV and things like that. So. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. This is great. Thank you, Mom, for sending yeah, that over. Yeah, Selena, I'll send you the current issue of Mad Magazine. Yes. And thank you for the video. That was great. That turntable just gets you thinking, like, what happens when <laughs> that breaks beyond repair? <laughs> like, uh, well, she said they make parts. I guess they make parts. There so are no parts. Like yeah. that. But, there are no uh, parts. Gosh, it seems so one of a kind. That yeah. Holy moly. I hope it's a simple mechanism so that they can fix it. <laughs> well, um, you know, I went to a train museum where they had a turntable like that. And I think the engine had given up and they had a little tractor with a chain connected and the tractor drove around it. And they could they could move the turntable with the tractor. And I guess the last foot of the, of the last with it track that couldn't go where the tracks connect back to the roundhouse they would have to push it by hand but it's great that people still keep old railroading stuff running yeah definitely i i like how they were doing a tractor and then mom was saying you just use four people to push it <laughs> yeah like, that's got to be four <laughs> really macho muscle men or you got to be able to get that train on the most perfectly centered point where like it's not that big of a you know how do yeah. they how, uh, this seems crazy awesome okay well with that thank you mom once again with that let's move on to the letter oh wait wait wait, wait actually sorry if the brakes. you want to make video <laughs> exactly <laughs> anything to do with a gadget a gadget of any kind just make sure it's horizontal format and anything to do with a video. We love videos of old technology. If you have a computer down in the basement that cost you a bundle and now is worthless, doesn't matter, make a video or something brand new, anything. Uh, one to three minutes, put it up on YouTube. There's a menu, a drop down menu, click on listed. That way only people with the URL will be able to see it. And mail, send us the URL, email it to us. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And I think we're running out of videos again. So get us a new video in the next 10 days. Make yeah. it eight days yeah. so we yeah. can see it. Okay. Record something good. at Thanksgiving. That'd be fun. Yeah, Thanksgiving that's good. Look yeah. Back. Thanksgiving good. gadget. Yeah, exactly. With that, let's move on to the letter. Oh, so quiet, the letter. I'll bring that back. So Mo, who sends us a lot of emails featuring bizarre gadgets, has found something else asking, would we wear these? And I think I can speak for both of us. Sight unseen for you. <laughs> these sneakers. Okay. Uh, I, well, right off the bat, they don't look that crazy. I mean, this just looks like a normal sneaker. Like I, you put your, your foot in there and then over there, but as we scroll down, you start to realize. They're backward sneakers. You can put them on forward. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you have an area for your foot, but your foot goes in on the other side. <clears throat> I, what? <laughs> Look, that's, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot his name, but he is a famous celebrity. Look, and he's wearing them courtside. But what is it? What do you gain? <laughs> He's getting them sh shoe shine. Sh yeah. yeah uh, oh, <laughs> you go. Oh, you know what? I need uh, a size 10 facing forward <laughs> and I need size 10 and a half facing backwards. I need a 10 wide forward and a 10 wide normal backward. <clears throat> so. Uh, 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 Marchand has a Marchand has a great use for these. It's for people who don't know if they're coming or going. Th there you go. There, there you, go. you go. Yeah. So that's the thing. You you can sell them that as a slogan. Hey, don't know if you're coming or going. Our new backwards sneakers. Um, Put them on forward. Walk. Put them on backward. Walk. For those who are indecisive, the backward sneaker. <laughs> 
So this is a company that is actually kind of known for making these super weird products. It's called Mischief, um, and they they offer products in a cycle that unlike other plate. So this has become a very I don't know where to start. I'm so sorry. <laughs> It there. sounds like you buy a lot of stuff there. <laughs> no, I've never. Uh, there's been a few things that I wanted to buy from them, but I haven't. Um, Mischief is similar to other very trendy brands that where all they do is they do drops. So they will not have a product that is a consistent product. Oh, you they, mean like they'll make a thousand of they'll them? They'll make a thousand of them. And they put them online, and when they sell out, they're done. And it's kind of... Well, didn't they make the walking pod that Mo had sent us? No. It was like... So that was no? just a random... Oh, oh okay. Yeah, that okay. was just random. Um, but, but their website has all sorts of products. And some of them are just so strange. Like this one is uh, Blurred Yin. And that's what you buy. This, when it comes to you, it looks like it's been blurred, but this is a physical product that exists. So if I just search blurry in and you look at images, this is, oh, this, oh, they did it with, uh, see, in the, it's blurred, it's blurred money. That's what you're buying. That's the whole point. Um, oh, that was back to design boom. Um, Mischief is known for doing these just super weird things. These boots, these the big red boots. Oh, boot, big boots they caught on. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Yep, yep. These this is mischief as well. Um, and then they got, a, they got a lot of traction. Those boots, but they don't stay to one product. They're not a shoe company, okay. right? Right. Oh, they did okay. this. Oh, the I big see. Fruit Loop. They sold a big Fruit Loop. <laughs> Just a giant fruit loop. That's what it is. <laughs> God. <laughs> there it's it's almost like a um <clears throat> it's almost like an experimental brand. Like sometimes things are obvious, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're like smells like WD forty cologne. This one's sold out. You can buy WD forty, the cologne. Like they live in this space of like almost like pop art where they'll take a known thing and kind of put a weird spin on it or yeah. it's like almost Andy Warhol-esque, but they're always products you can buy. Um, and some of them are high fashion, kind of like that shoe or the big red boot. Yeah, we didn't say there was no price on that shoe, right? Right. And that one, uh, it's I couldn't find that one on their website, which makes me think that okay. they made it, but it was a different type of drop. It was a different oh, okay. type of okay. way to get, get it. Um, so that's, that's kind of where this company exists. And some of their products, I've seen some of them, and they just look so darn cool. And some are just like... What? <laughs> like what? these? I, I, I cannot see a possible reason that like, you want shoes you can put on from either side. Like I'm just going down to their product list and just clicking a random thing. The kill pill. What is the kill pill? Let's learn what the kill pill is. This is drop uh, 57. Patented formula, life accelerant. I don't know what they were selling. They were selling the kill pill. Oh that was that God. one's drop. Uh, let's click another one. Uh, the only bags. I don't know what only bags are. Only bags drop number 66. Oh, look, they got a whole bunch of bags. I don't understand this. This is just... Boy, I don't either. <laughs> I want to buy a normal bag. Oh, I added it to my cart <laughs> there. I could buy the Ikea bag. Look at that. This is the Ikea bag for 40 uh... bucks. I got to add that one into my cart. <laughs> You can see that it's a whole experience. It's a whole yeah. thing. It's like, and I don't even know, am I even getting a bag? Am I getting just a 3D render of a bag? I have no idea. Honestly, I can't follow what this drop well, for was. Well, for $40, I don't think you want to. Right. The free movie. This looks like one of the more recent drops. Whoa. Okay. Watch the finished movie. Hand-drawn crowd pictures Frame by frame recreation of the entire B movie. 
It's a weird. Mm. It's yeah. It's a little too <laughs> weird for me. <laughs> it's it's you know it's almost like a you know there's been a few of these weird art projects, but it's just it's such an interesting take of it's almost always a product that you can buy. You it's like a weird capitalism take on art is okay. that you can all you're always trying to purchase the drop of whatever it is that they've decided to come up with. Um, well, if they get a couple of rich collectors, they got it made. They'll just buy every piece of... And have, you've yeah. heard of Supreme, um, the brand? Yeah. S Supreme does the same type of thing, but with a clothing brand, they do drops, right? They'll drop a product at pop-up stores or at a specialty thing, and then they're just done. And so it's not. it doesn't even need to be high-end collectors. It's just kind of you and me collectors. Like, it costs, you know, 150 bucks to get the mischief drop and that's a lot of money but it's not so much that i can't get it and then you know there's a thousand or two thousand of them out there and you know you're the cool one with that product or whatever it is um so yeah it's a I interesting all right <laughs> you're like i don't i don't follow <laughs> um so the backward shoe hard pass no you're not you no know. I, yes exactly me too that's great. Uh, thanks, Mo, for, for sending that over. That's a great conversation starter. <laughs> I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so, so, so much for your support. Yes. We are giving away gadgets over on Patreon right now. So if you become a patron, uh, check uh, for some of the more recent posts, and uh, you can get your name on the list to uh, get a gadget. Uh, right now, we're giving away a... Uh, cell phone mount and a and the steam clip which uh, we just did I'm not sure if that post is live yet but that's going to be the next gadgets that we're giving okay. away so uh, please become a patron patreon.com slash gizwiz or you can head on over to our website gizwiz.tv if uh, you can only remember one website uh, <laughs> gizwiz.tv click on the patreon tab at the top of the website and uh, you'll be greeted with a big old banner to our Patreon page or a tiny little link to our PayPal if you want to support us that way. However you support us, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your support. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch the show and starting tomorrow, the Giz Fizz live. Just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. Uh, that's for the Giz Whiz. Uh, and uh, I encourage you, come on over to the website. We'll, the website will just be live when, uh, when we are live. And uh, head on over there, gizwiz.tv. While you're there, join the chat room. Chat along with everybody. They're a fantastic group of uh, community, a fantastic community. So uh, please join and chat along. Or you can see any of our past episodes there gizwiz.tv Also, visit Diggy D at gizwiz.biz uh, He writes articles about all of the gadgets that we cover on the show so if you ever need more information about one of the gadgets that we talked about like <laughs> the creepy face bank <laughs> I, I, Honestly, Dick, I don't know if I needed more information about this one <laughs> Could have probably skipped that uh, While you're there, play what the heck is it? This is a game show that you get to participate in by guessing this gadget. This is the entire gadget, not just a piece or a part of it to throw you off. This is the entire gadget. Um, I, I'm sorry to give this one away, uh, but it is the uh, <laughs> my first um, shaving kit for <laughs> babies. <laughs> Okay, okay. This is my first razor. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I, I hear these babies are just getting frustrated with the 5 o'clock shadow. Um, and so... If you need... Well, babies only have a 1 o'clock shadow. <laughs> exactly. They have a newborn shadow. Uh, there you go. You can take that right away. If you think you know what this gadget is, get a guessing at uh, gizwiz.biz. Six mad magazines for correct answers. 12 mad magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, or interesting answers. So get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. That about wraps it up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs>